show you what we're looking at. So uh, the focus today is on class deadlines and we'll go through these and then we can problem solve and, and answer some questions. So we'll start off with talking about what are deadlines and how do you address uh, policies about class deadlines. So a deadline is simply a due date. You have a quiz due this Friday, February, whatever it is, the 4th and um, the 5th. And, uh, you know, how do you deal with, with the deadline? How do you set the deadline in Canvas? And then do you deduct either automatically through Canvas or manually on your own gradebook for late assignments? We'll also talk about the idea of specific to discussions, how some faculty have tried to do staggered discussions. I'll, I'll talk about what that means. It's basically like you would reward students maybe greater number of points early in the week versus later in the week, but we could get into issues of fairness about that, so we'll talk about that. And then we'll, we'll discuss this issue of COVID-19, empathy and fairness. How do you um, allow students maybe to do makeups, but also ensure that they're being accountable in their classes? So it's something I've struggled with for nearly 30 years of teaching, just trying to figure out what's fair and then what's also equitable in terms of not giving one student a break doing a makeup when another student maybe has really sacrificed to get their assignment done on time for you and didn't use an excuse. So kind of that's the, the framework today to talk about some of these issues. So let me just start off and say that if you're interested in any of the previous, I'll put this in the chat room. This is just ltcctcteachingandlearning.com backslash syllabus and it's in the chat. So this is that page that's set up that you can use those snippets to get some ideas about how other faculty have addressed issues in their classes and specifically scroll down to the section on grades because that's really what we're getting into. So you have your grading criteria set up in a class. You might have a rubric set up. I just evaluated a full-time instructor and she had an amazing discussion rubric. I thought it was really wonderful. It was detailed. It seemed fair and it had all the points that were allotted for, you know, turning the assignment in on time and appropriate grammar, whatever, and it was all laid out. So we all do that either at the macro level, having our grading scale, what's an A and a B in a class, and then at the more micro scale where sometimes for each assignment, like for my papers in my class last quarter, I had a very detailed rubric and I said, you'll get, if it's worth 30 points, you'll get 10 points for how well it's written, you'll get 10 points for um, incorporating the assignment requirements like the textbook reading. You'll get 10 points for going to the website that I had you um, analyze and, and talking about that. So we have like the big grading scale and then the rubrics at the more micro level. So you could see here that different people have policies and they talk about whether or not they allow lates or not. And I don't see anyone on here. We didn't get a sample of anyone talking about a late. Um, so, for example, I've seen some English instructors where their policy is if you turn your assignment in one day late, up to 24 hours late, I will dedu deduct 10% from the total grade on that assignment. If it's two days late, 20%. Anything after two days late, I will not accept. The good news is this. In Canvas, you can do that manually. So what we're looking at here is just a grade book. This is an empty class. So, you know, to get here, you just go to your class and click on your grade tab. And then you want to click on the bar up here, rather the uh, gear icon. This is your settings. And this is the place in Canvas where you do your late policies. So as you can see there, it says late policies. And this I generally don't do, but you're welcome to. So the minute you click automatically apply grade for missing submissions, um, this would be a, an example of a student didn't turn in an assignment. And so I would, in my class, that would be a 0%, right? So if it's blank in the grade book, unless you have this checked, Canvas will kind of have a color, I forget if it's gray or pink, but then you have to manually go in and put a zero. Um, so you could just do this and then that'll do it for you automatically. So that is like the missing assignment scenario. Now this one is more what I'm talking about, the late assignment. So if you click this, all of a sudden your grade book for that entire class will have a deduction policy, if you will. So late submission deduction or, um, and that's a percentage. So for me, it's, 
I do everything on points. So if I wanted to deduct by points, I would just convert my points to percentage. So if I had a three point deduction and it's 30 points, that would be um, what, 10 percent? Yeah, so I could put in 10 percent per day or I could do it per hour, right? So that's interesting too. So if I really wanted to emphasize, like I could divide by 48 or 24 and figure out in a 24 hour period, you know, maybe the students could lose, if they lost 10% per hour, eventually they would be what in, that's a math problem, would it be in, in 10 hours, they would be at 0%, right? If you did it by hour. If you did it by day, and you just said 10% uh, by day, they could have up to eight days until they would say be at 0%. Now, you could override that by saying, I want a lowest possible grade. So maybe the lowest possible grade is a C, 70%, and then even though this is saying you get that submission deduction, once you get to that lowest possible grade, that that's the that's you know the highest they could they could earn on that. It, so I I don't know how what you think of this. I I find it a little bit limited because you don't have a lot of options. You can't do it by points. You have to do by percentage. But this does at least take some of the work off your plate. If you want to have a policy for applying automatic deduc deduction to late submissions. Now, again, if you don't do that, then uncheck that because anyone who turns an assignment in late will, uh, you know, n not get a score. They'll get a zero for that. And just to remind us of how you do that, this is a, a sample exam. So anytime you go to your exam or discussion board, you'll have this assign tab down here. So this is always everyone in your class. But then this is where you get into your due date and then your from and until. I've always found this confusing and I think it took me a couple years to figure this out. So the due date is the hard, fast, you know, my assignment is due on March 31st at 3 p.m. That's when it's due. And, you know, no, no lates or whatever. The minute you get into this, um, you need to have an, an available on here. If you have the available, this is when the assignment opens up. What I do in my class is I cut and paste, I copy my due date, and I click that on the until. Okay, so these are exactly the same. The reason for that is I don't allow for, for lates. If I get a late, and I did this last quarter, a couple cases, students had COVID, they sent me a doctor's note, and I just graded their assignment afterwards. I didn't mess with it on the automatic grade book. I didn't deal with this on the assign tab setting. I just do it on a case-by-case -case basis for, for late and makeups. So if you want to do makeups, what you could do on this is you could say, even though the due date is March 31st, I'll give the students one day. So that would be April 1. I think they, yeah, they, they abbreviated APR, April 1. And then once I hit save on that, um, okay, well, it's not going to let me do it. I don't, I could assign it. Okay, assign it to the whole class. Now it'll let me do it. So what this means is because I have the until selected as something other than the exact due date of March 31st at 3 p.m., if it's 3.01 p.m., that means I'm accepting lates in my class. So then what I think you really have to think about is when you grade that, assign it a late deduction if that's your policy or auto set that up in your class so Canvas does that. And if you know you want to go no more than one day, you know, uh, put the deduction on here and, and decide on that. Um, again, I find this a little tricky just because I do everything on points and not on percentages. So did that, because these are, I think, the two main areas to talk about lates in your, your Canvas settings. Do you, do you have any questions? Does that make sense, the two things? Go ahead, Solange. Okay. In the, uh, I can barely read your screen, but in the um, due date, the date due, March 31st, yeah. the assignment is available from and until. Mm -hmm. If you open up the until past mm -hmm. the due date, Mm -hmm. It opens it up for the first class for the whole class, even though the whole class doesn't know it, the one yeah. or two students that need that extra day or two will be notified. So they have access to the discussions because if you don't open it, it's locked and they do not have access. 
So in order for me to give them access, the until is changed to April 1st, April 2nd. And mm. what happens is, is in speed grader, yeah. it will show late because it's after the due date. Even though you've allowed them to submit their discussions two days later, mm -hmm. it will still show as late in speed grader. Okay. Yeah, and that's actually good. I totally forgot about speed grader. So um, what I wanted to do since this class, let me see if this works. I think it should. I opened speed grader. Oh, no active students. So, well, we're not going to be able to look at it, but Solange, you're right. So in speed grader, one of the best ways to give students additional access is to do it through SpeedGrader. Um, so you can give students, you know, an additional day to work on it. You can reopen a quiz and so forth. So there definitely are ways to do that inside of Canvas and SpeedGrader. When I do that again, because it's case by case, I don't even mess with changing this because I always have these two dates the same. They do and until. Because I figure if I'm doing a makeup, it's case by case, doctor's note, or you know, legitimate excuse, and then I just go into my grade book as I normally would and grade that student's assignment late. Because as an instructor, you can always go in and override a grade. You always have the power to do that. So uh, yeah, go ahead. But you have to open it up under available until, because okay. if you don't, it's locked and they cannot submit. And I have to have it submitted in discussions in order for me to grade it. So I have to extend the yeah. available until. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, that's true. So this will set, again, the due date is here. And then the from and until sets it. So if this is set and April 1st, the student is trying to complete this and it's until March 31st, they're locked out. So what I do in that case, the way I do it just personally is I manually give that student access and then say, okay, complete it by such and such date. Okay, yeah, once I publish a quiz, how can I give my students extra time? Um, oh, it's under moderate, moderate. That, that I know. Yeah. But under speed grader, is there a way to extend their time without extending it for the entire class? I... I, you know, now I'm thinking it's under moderate, but I'm wondering on speed grader, when you click on the student's name, if it'll take you to that option. I think it's under moderate. I think I was confusing the two. Oh, here it is. It's okay. It's, it is available. So let me show you. We go to a discussion here. Um, you click on edit. It's right underneath the window we were looking at. Okay, so scroll to the bottom and then you click the add button. Let me, let me get this a little larger. Uh, click the add button and that's where you do it. So now, yeah, um, yeah, like so if it's Joe or whatever, Joe would pop up and then you set this specific to that student. And you could do that as many times as you need it. See? So that's how you do it on discussions. So try that out. I've never done that. Yeah, I know. I've never used that. I've used Canvas all these years and I've never used the add button, but that's, so that's how you do it on anything that is, and that should work for quizzes too. Um, because I think here, when we click on it, that same edit, edit, edit. and then the add right at the bottom. Yep, there that'll work there too. So that's how you do it by case by case. Yeah. Now I know how to yeah. No, I've, I've never used add because I, I just do deal with a one on one because it just saves me some steps. But this is probably better. You know, then it's less for you to, to think about. And then that that'll show up then in, in your grading as opposed to having to do that all manually and just put it in the grade book. So that's right. perfect. Also, to change the, the uh, until date for the entire class, yeah. I don't want to do that. No. I just want to change it for that student or that student or that student. So that's how you do it. And then this way you set the due date. And then um, if, if it's, you know, February 9th when they're starting it, put February 9th there. And let's say you give them till the 11th, February 11th, February 11th. And then right. in that case, you would have both of these being the same because if a student's assignment already is late, you're just, you're just going to set that due date and make that the same as the until date. Yeah, that's perfect. Well, that was good. I'm No, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad we figured that out because I've never, ever, ever used ad in, in my whole life, which is amazing. So it's right there. Yeah, that's well, really good.
So that's like actually probably the best approach to do it that way. If you're not doing any deductions for a late assignment, if you're going to do it case by case, you don't have to check this, right? This is just if you want to automate any late assignments in your class and apply late deductions. So if you don't do that like I do or you do it case by case, leave that unchecked because why add more numerical you know, stuff to your class? I, I think I would just leave it unchecked. Um, sorry, I think that adding yeah. the automatically apply grade for missing submissions, which is a zero. Yeah. In my class, it's a zero. Yeah. If you don't fill out the grade in the grade chart, if you mm -hmm. don't fill in that zero, their grade is not fairly. No. Right. So you need to, yeah. I think that's an excellent way yes. to make sure all your yeah. boxes are filled with zero. Exactly. I agree. I agree. I've done that before where it Canvas doesn't count against them. So if they're missing three assignments, it might say they have an A when that's not accurate. So you either have to manually zero it, and that's what I used to do, or click this. So that's probably your best bet is to have that clicked for Absolutely. sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I didn't know that existed. Thank you. Yeah. No, it's, um, it's really good. And I have this automatically posting grades. Some people want to manually do it to make sure that the students don't see it until they've manually checked it over. I always do automatically post grades. What, is, what does that mean? It means once, um, let's say I have a quiz worth uh, 10 points and Canvas auto grades that quiz. If it's on auto automatically post grades, that means once the student hits submit, they immediately see how many points out of 10 they got. Oh, if you don't want that, then, um, you know, you would have to manually let the student see the grades after you're ready to do that. So it's yeah. it's kind of just your style, yeah. Right. And then there's advanced uh, final grade over override. So um, for the very, very end grade, but that one's kind of irrelevant because we, we always have to do grades through um, our grade book program on Passport. So, you know, you always have to copy grades over. So yeah, I feel like if you're doing late submissions and you want an automatic policy or um, percentage deduction, let Canvas do it, do that. If you're doing it like uh, you know Solange and I are talking about, your best option is to go to that assignment, whether a discussion or quiz, click on the add button, and then it's not showing me here, but if you type in the student's name, it'll appear, select that, and then you can give student by student access to it. Or you can do on moderate quiz. Yeah. So either way, either way works. Yeah, for sure. Um, either way works. I, I think however you want to do it. So we talked about late deductions. So just wanted to mention some, I'll mention this about staggered discussion deadlines. So some people on their discussion posts like the idea of rewarding students who post early. So in other words, you have a discussion post here and it's due on the 22nd of March, 2019. And so you wanna encourage students to post discussions early. And let's say, I don't know what the 22nd was, let's say it's a Friday or Saturday. Well, a common problem in a class is your discussions maybe don't pick up speed until the end of the week. So if my discussions are due on a Friday or Saturday, which is common for me, I like end of the week, that's just how I kind of handle it, then maybe people don't start doing it until late on Thursday or even on Friday, if it's due on Friday. I've heard some instructors come up with a, a system where they almost award like bonus points. So if someone has a discussion due on a Friday, they would give a bonus point or two for any student who posts on Monday and Tuesday to get the discussion going. Now, in terms of equity, I wanna say, you should be able to get full credit for any assignment in your class if it's turned in on time. So it wouldn't be fair, for example, if your discussion board is due on a Friday and some students, you know, didn't post until Friday at the deadline that they got less than the full points possible unless they messed up the assignment or didn't do the discussion correctly. So the only way to do this is to say early in the week, you want your discussions to stagger. You'll give bonus points to a student who um, participates and does their discussions early. The only problem I see with that is there's no way to really do that in Canvas. There isn't a way that I'm recalling to do like a bonus for each assignment. So as a result of that, you'd have to figure out how you're going to track those points. If you're gonna separately have a spreadsheet and say, 
the student I'll track uh, their bonus points and at the end of the quarter if they have bonus because they posted on a Monday and a Tuesday as per your rule to to encourage people to start a conversation you would then have to somehow track those points so I don't know like Solange do you do you award people for doing stuff early or is it just they, they can get the full credit for that I the only thing I do for early submissions is mm -hmm. grade them early or give them comments. Like I said, I'm project yeah. based, so I can actually create comments to make their assignment better before the deadline. So okay. if they submit on it, my deadlines are Monday at eight o'clock. That way I get let the students work all weekend on their assignments. Mm -hmm. So if they submit on Wednesday, and there are problems with their what they've submitted, I put down, I make notes and um, write them in Canvas inbox and say, you need to do this, that, and the other because okay. you missed this, that, and the other. And that gives them the time over the weekend to fix it. Great. So I actually give fix it time for my early submissions. Well, I love that. And I, and I hope you can, by the way, next week, our teaching talk is on class projects. So I hope you can attend and maybe we can uh, um, pick on you a little bit to talk about that because I really want to see how you approach projects. Yeah. I'll make sure. Great. Yeah. Because that I love that fix it time. That's a really cool approach because I informally do that with my project, but it's more in the form of the students contact me and go through their final projects and ask me questions. But I love this idea of a fix it time because it's like you're giving them an opportunity to go back because they've turned it in before that's that's really good that's really good that's exactly right yeah so that's cool yeah so i don't know i just i i put this on our agenda because i feel like i've heard this before i remember michelle sower who used to teach at the college and former dean of instruction would do this and i think she did it with a rubric she had a rubric somehow and i think it's a cool idea because you're you're encouraging people to to get their work done early and you're getting the discussion going. What I don't like in my online classes, my key issue with discussions is 90% of the people wait till the last minute and then your discussion is only happening on Friday, like Friday morning if it's due Friday at 5. So I totally get the idea of the staggered discussions deadline. I just don't think there's a practical way that I've seen to track the bonus points, but it's totally up to you. So. Yeah, so that, that is an option. And I just wanted to mention also, and you could always check out, if you go to LTCC Teaching and Learning, there are quite a few workshops we did. Um, I think even before, yeah, even before COVID, strangely enough, we're talking a lot about empathy right now and COVID and makeups, and I've done more makeups than normal last quarter in my, my two classes. If you're interested, you could click on the student topics handout on teachingandlearning.com, and then there are at least two videos you can watch on students and empathy. So I think what we talked about in those, those two workshops that was important was just the idea that we should be empathetic in our teaching, but then at the same time, we can balance that with our own standards. If we don't have any deadlines in a class, kind of unreasonable, right? But if we stretch our deadlines a little bit because there was a breakout of COVID or when the fires were happening, which was kind of, you know, in between our, what, summer and, and fall, um, it caused us actually to to push fall instruction, what was a week later. Um, yeah, we all know that there are things that come up. So case by case, I think in your class, think about this. Certainly COVID has required a lot of adapting on our parts, on our students' parts, on the staff at the college. So I totally get it. So I would say, you know, fairness is always the key thing that we talk about. You know, be fair and equitable. I think if you give it um, an extension to one student that isn't legit, like let's say one student says, you know, I had COVID and like for me, the student just gave me a doctor's note and I said, that's great. I'm going to give you a makeup. If a student just was like, I didn't get my assignment done, can I have an extra week? And you don't ask the reason, to me it's unfair if you give the one student an extra week and not the rest of the class. So if there's something like that, like I remember once we had this crazy snowstorm, I thought students would not make it to my in-person final. They all did. And as they were rolling in late, I said, look, um, if anyone doesn't make it for the final, I'm probably going to give a take home or an extension. So Let's wait and see if everybody shows up, you guys will take the final. And they all showed up. It was a crazy storm. I don't know how we stayed open. This was like 
close to 17, 18 years ago. And so I'm always looking out fairness of the whole class. So if one student has a legit reason for missing something, I work on that st- work with that student case by case basis. If it's the whole class, then you know that's a different circumstance. If you're like, hey, there was a Canvas outage and your final project was due on Friday and Canvas went out or the entire internet or electricity was lost in South Shore, for the students in South Shore, the students living up at the lake, I personally think it'd be unfair if you didn't give that class an extension. So, you know, it's like never say never. There's always something in Tahoe, whether it's a forest fire, uh, a power outage, you know, storm of the century like this year, which broke most records going back to the 70s. Um, we've had some crazy circumstances. Finals week this week was this year. Last quarter was crazy. So I think fairness, I think empathy and fairness for all your students is just a great opportunity or a great, um, you know, foundation or kind of guideline to follow. So, um, so now we can just open up for questions, comments. Again, I've showed you a couple things. There isn't a lot you have to deal with in Canvas. If you want to do the late policies, that that's found under your gearbox icon on the gradebook. And then, as we discovered, any assignment, whether a discussion or a quiz, once you click on the edit button, you have that very handy add at the bottom of your assigned to, and that allows you case by case to give an extension. I've never used that, kind of just discover that today through the process of going through this. I've always used moderate. Um, when you're doing a quiz, I've clicked moderate. But Solange, I think discussions doesn't have moderate, right? So you'd have to use add. Yeah. So that's the only thing. So I would probably personally use this add button, try it out because that's student by student and it's really easy. You just keep adding those as much as you want to with each student. So I think that's good. That's excellent. Yeah. I was, let me look one more place under settings. Um, For some reason, why was I thinking there's something in Canvas for extra credit? I have in the back of my mind that Allow outcome extra credit. Okay, interesting. Ah, so that's I that's how you do it. Okay. If embedded, this allows more than the maximum possible score on an outcome to be given on a rubric. So you know what I'm thinking? Um, if we create real quick a discussion rubric, I bet, let's see here. I bet that's how we would um, deal with that scenario. Let's try that. So this is an assignment rubric. Um, Okay, so let's just do one. Let's just uh, call it um, um, completeness or something like that. Oops. Or let's just call it. um, Well, it's my extra credit scenario. So let me just call this. um, I'm just going to say follow the rules. I'm just going to try this out. Follow the rules. Okay. So this is if you do a rubric in your um, discussion. And let me just see here, remove points, da 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 da. Okay, create rubric. Now the only problem is, I don't think it's gonna let me, I was going to see if it'll let me do it as a test student. Let me try this, speed grader. Ah, there are no active students, darn it. Okay, it's probably because this class isn't active. Well, darn it, but I think that's how you do it. So. Remember the scenario earlier, I wanted to give some students, let's say two extra points for posting on a Monday and a Tuesday, if the thing is due later in the week. That's how we're going to do it. So we're going to click on, now I gotta go back to my class, click on your settings, and that option then should allow you on the rubric to um, go in and give additional points. So if this is enabled, If enabled, it allows more than the maximum possible score on an outcome to be given on a rubric. So it has to be on a rubric. So if I set up my rubric and let's say the maximum for that item on the rubric is five points, I could give seven points according to this on a rubric. Now, the thing I'd want to see then is when I go back to my graded discussion in Canvas gradebook, if the student, let's say, got full credit plus two points of extra credit and it's worth 20, it should say 22 points on the grade graded assignment in the grade book. So we're not going to be able to test that right now, but I think this is doing what I'm talking about in that example of giving a student extra credit for posting an early discussion. It, to me, that sounds like that, doesn't it? Yeah. 
So that that could be an option. Again, I know Solange, you don't do that. I don't necessarily do that. But some faculty have said they really want to be able to go in and give students extra points for posting early in the week to get the discussions going. It looks like this will let you do it, but you have to set up a rubric on your discussion. It won't let you, I think, go over the maximum number of points in the actual grade um, box in SpeedGrader. But we'd have to try this out. Is this rubric per discussion? Yeah. Or for all discussions? Mm. It's per discussion, but I believe Canvas, I've I've created rubrics. I believe it lets you save the rubric as as a name. Let me see here. Um, if we go to rubrics here, show rubric, or maybe this one is by discussion. Let me just go to week 11 discussion. I think maybe you have to do it separate, although it would be nice if you could just copy the thing over. Add rubric. Um, find oh find, wait find a rubric oh okay no there are there are different rubrics yep so look at all these rubrics available so I would just click on that rubric and it shows me the rubric so thesis development critical writing originality use this rubric yep and it's there so you can it's canvas saves any rubric that you create then so that's kind of cool. But you have to create that rubric for each discussion for each week. You can't. No, not- no, you could you could use the same one because this is um, I I imported this. So if I go to my week eleven discussion, it'll let me import any rubric. Apparently, it's any rubric I've ever created here. Because look at all the ones that come up. Find rubric, and these are all the various rubrics. So yeah, no. You're doing it per discussion week. It's not. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I think, I think it's per discussion, but, um, one way around that is, let's see, one way around that is you could copy. I'm trying to think, I was just trying to think if you set up a discussion as a module, you could, you can always copy, right? So you could copy. So what I would do is I'd set up my week one discussion all the information, uh, set up my rubric. So let's find a rubric that we use. So I think this one is the one we're using. Uh, Use this rubric. So that rubric is now loaded in. Now, go back to my modules. Week one discussion has the rubric. So all I'd have to do is copy this um, every time. And then I'd have to go in and rename week one discussion to week two discussion change anything I needed to change. But you could definitely um, do it once and then copy each of your discussions and then rename them under each of your modules. So there are some workarounds there. I would probably, I think the easier thing is just to create your rubric. um, And I think if I create this, let me me call it something unique that we remember. Um, So test rubric one. And then I'm just going to... uh, just do that. Okay, so it's not a real rubric. And now, if we go to week three discussion, or let's just do week seven. We didn't do that one yet. And then let me add a rubric. Go to find rubric, and we should see test one. It's alphabetical, I think. Or no, it's called rubric. Was it called rubric test one, or what was it called? Um, I'm not seeing it. I thought it was called rubric one or rubric test one. Interesting. I don't know why it's not there. Um, Let's see if I click discussion rubric, what that does. Huh. Okay. It's, yeah, that's weird. It should be there. Um, Hmm. Okay. I'm not, I don't use, I generally do it. I'm trying to remember how I've done this in the past. I do rubrics for each of my assignments. Like I had a paper assignment last quarter. And for that, I did it by um, paper by paper because the rubrics were totally different based on the paper. But what I was suggesting is you could create one rubric and then just find it for each class. Now, what if I click on manage rubrics? Or each discussion. Yeah, each discussion. Okay. Um, four criteria, general homework, discussion rubric. There's your test. Oh, there it is. Okay. It's there. Interesting. 
So I don't know why it wasn't letting me find that. That's weird. Unless it was sort of nested under something else. I'm not entirely sure. Because um, what I was hoping, I was click find rubric and it would have that rubric, but that's not showing up. I don't know why. Huh. Weird. Um, okay, well, yeah, I guess we can we can continue to mess with rubrics. I don't use them a lot, um, except for my papers, but um, they could be great. And again, for those of you trying to do that bonus point for your discussions, it looks like, again, if you have that setting set up in Canvas, it should allow you to give some bonus points under your rubric because this will allow you to give more than the maximum score. That's the only place I know of inside of Canvas where I've seen extra credit identified. That's the only place I've seen. Um, things are always changing. They're doing a um, an enhanced redesign of announcements and discussions and quizzes and some things are definitely changing here and there. So um, yeah, it's always good to be on the lookout for changes in Canvas, obviously. Yeah. Well, Canvas is a very smart, brilliant app. It is. It is. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't, I rarely have complaints about it. So, um, yeah, it's it's great. So. The more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. Totally. Yeah, like today, it's like I, that add button, I mean, that's, that's brand new for me. I just, I've never, I've seen it, just haven't used it because I do everything case by case, but that would actually make it easier for me. I'll definitely use that in the future because uh, it automates it for you a little bit, which is what I like, so opening up my class for the entire no. class. I just want to open it up no. for one student. One student, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now, are your classes start on Monday and on Fridays? Is that how your class is set up to start on Monday? Is yeah, it you yeah, you know, I generally, I stagger it. If I'm doing two classes in the quarter, I do, I always do Monday uh, as a start or Sunday. Most people don't do anything on Sunday. So I would say Monday and then either like Friday or Saturday is how I do it. I like the end of the week. I, I think I've done Sunday before, but a lot of students don't like working on Sundays, I found. I, yeah. I have always had my classes from Monday at 8 o'clock in the morning to Monday at 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay. That way my students have the option to use the weekends. Yeah. They have the option, and most of them wait to the weekends because they're so yeah. busy with their other classes that they'll do my class over the weekend. Right. All right, cool. So I guess um, we should probably call it to a close. So next week, uh, I'll send a notice out, but we'll do uh, class projects. I'm really excited to talk about that. So hopefully a bunch of faculty who do class projects can participate because I know a lot of us do projects and we just maybe want to get some tips on best approaches. Yeah.